Hi, welcome to ADI Technical Training. I'm Matthew. Today I'm in the technical lab at our UK hub in Chatterton, Manchester. Let's get started. In this video, we're looking at the Honeywell Max Pro MPA1P standalone controller. We're going to be setting that up with the HID signal reader in a OSDP format. The Honeywell um, controller, the MPA1P, is it's a fairly new controller to the market. It has some unique features. One of these unique features is how you set the control up in the first instance. With it being uh, an IP controller, you need to create an IP address for it. Typically, you would do that with DHCP and allow it to acquire its own address, or you could put it on uh, with a static address, uh, static IP address from the factory, which is all useful. However, if you've got a lot of these to configure in the first place, and they're all on the same uh, IP address, that can be a problem. You have to disconnect one at a time, maybe go to each device locally and power it up. If it's PoE, you have problems doing that. You'd have to have your own local PoE switch. So Honeywell have come up with a clever way of doing it. And what they do is they allow you to pro initially program the device with a Bluetooth inf interface, i.e. use your smartphone or maybe a, a tablet. And you can browse into the device on BLE, program in your IP address and your general settings, leave it on the network it's on, on its PoE network that it's on, and then go to the browser and browse into it or, or to your client if it's Max Pro Wimpack and add it that way. It's the same with the HID reader. I'll show you in this demonstration, but the HID reader is also initially configured and set up with um, a Bluetooth app. You use an app on your phone, browse into it, and change the general settings, whether it's OSDP, Wiegand, what format Wiegand the, that output is that's reading its output in 2634. Um, but I'll show you both procedures. You will need to download both apps uh, for your phone, you'll need to download the Reader Manager from HID, and you would also need to download the Honeywell uh, Reader Manager app. Which, so to start with, you need to enable Bluetooth on the Honeywell controller. You do that by pressing the reset button, press it for 20 seconds, and you'll notice the heartbeat lights on the controller, and it will stop. Once that stops, that will cycle the controller to restart. And when it, the controller does restart, you'll see the blue light will come on. And that blue light tells you the controller is initialized and it's ready for Bluetooth connectivity. Before we use the, um, the Honeywell app to program the device, all we're going to do is have a quick look at the HID reader. And we're going to use, look at the HID manager. We just need to make sure that this reader and this combination is compatible. And that's how you would do, you would do it on site. Do the reader first, then the controller, and then get onto the software and do further programming. So let's have a look at Reader Manager. Reader Manager is just a simple tool from HID to set the reader up. The, uh, the input on this controller requires the reader to give an OSDP output, and the tokens I'm using requires the reader to read Desfire, EV1, EV2, EV3, and my fair classic so that's all we're going to use the, the tool for just to set the reader up make sure it's compatible let's open the hid reader manager app and this device here this is going to go through the settings of the reader so i just need to confirm how our, our reader is set up so do a quick scan you can see the signal let's click on signal it's going to download the information from the signal. It's going to tell us how it's programmed, what, what key sets in, the, in there, any mobile credentials. And then once it does that, we can quickly browse through and see, that, uh, see what is or isn't enabled. So let's have a look at detailed configuration. Let's click on that. One of the things you must do is power up and power down the reader. I'm just going to edit this so it's not as long, but it can take up to a minute sometimes. So power down and then it uploads the credentials. It just proves you're a genuine user. Now we're actually into the configuration of the reader. It's uploaded the file to the, um, to the, to the app so we can examine how this is behaving. 
And if first things first, we want to make sure this is communicating as OSDP rather than Wigand. And if we click on there and you can see it's already set for OSDP. However, if we wanted to change it to Wigand, we can do, but we need it as OSDP. So we don't need to make any changes there. Next is the card format. It's set in the format I want it to be, which is 34-bit. Normally it's 26-bit, but that's fine as it is. So in this case, we don't actually need to make any changes to the reader. Now, that's saved. Now we can use the, the Honeywell app, and we can browse into the device, follow the instructions on how to reset the device, and this will then allow us to browse into the device. With, we just captured the QR code there. We browse into the device, it downloads, much like the HID manager, it downloads all the information to your app. And in this app, you can then make changes to suit. It's a fairly quick process, really, and it's a lot easier to do this uh, with your phone than it is a laptop. So now we've got the information of the controller. And if you want to, for instance, you can see I've already configured this as ADI test. But if you wanted to, you can click on that name and edit a new name in there if you like. So I'll call this one the ADI wall because it's going on the wall. And uh, just to add a little note there, it's the boxed controller, not the unboxed one. That all looks fine. Next up, is it um, a web-based or is it a uh, Max Pro? Well, it's web, so let's leave it as web. Is it the primary? Yes. Sync the time with the app. That's fine. Next is your IP address, static or DHCP. I strongly suggest you change this to static. And I'm just going to type in the address we use on our local network um, so I can find it later on. Now, this is the address that you're going to browse into this with your web browser later on to make changes and, and have a look. So make sure you remember this address, basically. And it's still the, the standard information. It's the IP address that you would use. And then things like the uh, subnet and the gateway. And it's just generic information. But perhaps you would have to ask your customer for that information if it's going on their network. Now all that information is saved into the app. We just need to save that onto the app and then transmit that to the, um, to the controller, which we're doing now. You can see it's a pretty short process. It sends the information over via Bluetooth. And in some cases, it's 10 seconds. Some cases, it can be a minute. Once the information is sent over, that's it really for your mobile phone or the rest of the programming. You would do that through Chrome on, the, on your browser, on your machine. So this is the point you'd maybe get to your client's laptop or your client's computer, get on the network and then browse into the controller. We know it's IP address 192.168.1.214 or whatever your address is. So now we're in Chrome. We're just going to type in the uh, the password, uh, sorry, the IP address, and then browse into the controller. Usual warnings you get when you're going to a new device when you haven't got an SSL sorted out yet. Accept all the risks. It's going on your local area network. Next up, we need to sign in to the device. The standard username is admin admin. You're prompted uh, to change that username and password upon site first sign in. So you're going to need to think of a strong password that complies with the Honeywell um, format. So I've got my uh, standard password I use for everything. I'll just type that in. And then once that's done, confirm, press save. And that will take us over to the controller. OK, and this brings us to the to the dashboard. We're now into the panel and we can start making some changes to, to get the thing to work. So as I've mentioned there, we're using a, a signal reader, a generic signal reader, and we're using generic um, Deskfire EV1 cards. It's worth bearing that in mind. Uh, in most cases, we were asked, can we use a client's third-party MyFair or third-party EV1, EV2 card uh, for access control? Which means in, in most situations, we don't have card numbers available and we don't have site codes available, which is fine. We can still use that. So what we have to do is navigate 
first of all at the top there we need to navigate to panel configuration in this menu we can change uh, things like the ip address we can switch dhcp on and off I strongly suggest you can leave that as static uh, change your, your time format and your time zones change the time and date in this situation we're using it as a, basically a standalone single door control and maybe the front door to an office where they've only got the one door and that's all they would ever need however if the system's likely to expand and they want centralized control they might want to upgrade to Wimpack. or if they want remote management they're going to use a cloud-based system max pro cloud we can change that later on we can set this up as a standalone system and then when we want to bring it into the Wimpack or the max pro environment we can come to this menu and simply click on whichever option we're using press save and then follow the relevant procedure um, time sync I've disabled that you can enable it why not that way it um, synchronizes with the browser time so let's synchronize it's a very very short process next up card formats if you remember in the HID manager snapshot in the we'll talk through there I the, the reader was already set up for 34-bit Wigand so we're going to add that 34-bit Wigand as a valid format and then we're going to save that format so that's 34 bit added we have got a menu here for advanced so if you were using uh, hid read sorry honeywell reader with honeywell cards you can add cards a lot easier you can add them by the serial number at the bottom of the card or in the packet that they come in it's a lot easier to do it that way and to do that you need to add a site code but as we're using generic cards with a generic reader as an input we're not doing that at this point so now we go back to panel configuration let's have a look at alarm and events this is the window where we're going to look at um, events as they come through for instance if i present a card now we should see that this card that i've just presented is an invalid card this card's not found and what we can do is we can use this opportunity to take the inputted card number copy that card number back to the dashboard and we're going to add a user using that information so let's add a card there are no cards added yet so let's add a card that's the card number copied in any other information we need to add not really let's press save Now we've got a working card, we need to assign that to a person, an individual. So we're going to add people. First name, we're going to call it a A D I A D, and the last name is E V two, because the card I'm using here is one of my A D I cards, and it says E V two on it. It just helps me find it in the pile of cards I've got here. So that's the username. Which card we're going to issue them? So if we click here. We can see the available cards one we've just inputted let's add that and now ad ev2 that user has an associated card and we can save them so now we have a, a we have a card added to the system we have a user name an individual with a card the next thing is access groups what time or what zone is that a person allowed through now with a single door control it's obviously it's only the one door but what time are they allowed through maybe we're going to be strict with some people they're only allowed in the office between half eight and six o'clock uh, some people are allowed in at all times and some people are only allowed in the evening to do their shift so you need to create an access group now i'm not creating any new time zones or access levels on the system we're going to use the standard um, time zone as 24 hour access 24 7. so first of all access group there's the um, the user they're allowed in through door one 
and when they are they allowed in at all times. The door name, let's call that uh, door one. You can call it whichever door you like. The main entrance, goods in, IT room, but whatever you would, just, just so you know what door it is. So now door one has a selected user. It could be a whole lot of people. And um, they're allowed in through that door 24 seven. And let's save. And that inputs the information through to the controller. So if we just nip back to the uh, events window, and if you remember not so long ago, 5380 card not found, they weren't allowed access. So now if I present the card, you can see the card was found and they were granted access, read array. So it's just a small event log. It just shows you what time somebody came in. If you had to read and read out, you can see what time they left as well. But however, it's just a single door. And there we go, the very short tutorial on setting up the, the Honeywell controller. Install as rely on ADI. The ADI projects and technical teams offer a pre-configuration service. Any project size from a single device or to a complex system. Any IP device can be configured from our central hub using our technical and projects teams. Having your device pre-configured will save engineers time on site. We can set your IP address, the gateways, and in addition, we'll make sure your device has the latest firmware on board. Simply get in touch with your ADI sales contact or email the projects team. Thanks very much for watching. All the products mentioned in this training video can be found on our website. Links are below. Don't forget to subscribe. Thanks very much.